In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a GraphQL query project up and running fast. We're going to learn what GraphQL queries are. I'm going to show you how to set up this project using Spring Boot, Spring JPA, and H2N Memory Database. This is going to be a bit of a crash course. At the end, I'm going to show you how to document your GraphQL API and how to execute some of those queries using GraphIQL. Hey, it's Steve Catra. I'm here to empower engineering managers and engineers to get up to speed with new technologies quickly. I'm passionate about discussing new technologies, my workflow, and how we can get you and your team up to speed as quickly as possible. To stay up to date with my latest content, consider hitting the subscribe button and feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I've broken up this lesson into eight easy pieces. We're going to cover the GraphQL specification, how to clone the project, We'll review the domain objects, the repositories, how to set up the GraphQL schema, and the resolvers. We'll take a look at a servlet filter that will allow you to do lazy fetching, which is really key with GraphQL. And we'll also set up the seed data. And then at the very end, make sure to hang around to find out how to set up GraphIQL, how to execute your queries, and how to document them. We're gonna start off by reviewing the GraphQL specification. So just as a reminder to folks, a uh, GraphQL query is a read-only fetch. As GraphQL defines its operations uh, with inside of the spec, there are operation types like query, mutation, subscription. You can name queries, you can pass variables into queries. There are certain directives you can apply on queries and a selection set where you can actually set which attributes you'd like to have returned back as part of your query. All right, let's go ahead and clone the project. So you can head over to github.com forward slash sketra forward slash GraphQL meeting. You'll see the green code button that you can click. It'll have a drop down menu. It'll give you an HTTPS link to the repo. Go ahead and copy that. Head over to git bash. Um, you're gonna wanna head in and enter git clone and then the URL. All right, now that we've got that cloning, um, we've got the code pulled down. Let's go ahead and CD into the workspace. So GraphQL meeting. Now that we're in there, let's validate that we have Gradle set up appropriately. So we're going to do Gradle dash dash version. This should give us a nice little banner to let us know that we've got Gradle 6.7 set up and JDK 11. Now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and set up our IntelliJ uh, project files by doing a Gradle clean idea idea. Give this just a second to execute. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and build the project. So you can do a Gradle clean build. This will go ahead and pull down all the dependencies required, compile the code, and get the jar ready for execution. Let's go ahead and kick off the project to make sure that it's actually running. So we'll do a Gradle boot run. All right, so the project's starting up here, firing up the H2 memory database, and we are good to go. All right, let's go ahead and open up a new tab. Go to localhost 8080 graph IQL, and we can see that we've got graph IQL up and running. We see that we can explore our query that I've got set up in the project for you. So with this, let's go ahead and get IntelliJ set up. So go ahead and fire up IntelliJ. You're gonna wanna uh, open a new project. You can click on the GraphQL meeting. Um, that's going to go ahead and pull in several files here. Um, and get things set up for you. You can load it as a Gradle project. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and enable the Lombok uh, annotation processing. All right, so with that, we have a project that's set up now. So we can explore the, the project files associated. You've got source, main, Java, um, and resources. So in resources, you're going to have your application YAML file and you're gonna have your schema GraphQLS. With inside of your source main Java, you'll have a couple packages we'll work with covering domain, repositories, resolver, and the place where we'll put our seed data, the actual runner for the application. All right, let's dive in and review the domain objects. Uh, our first domain object is a meeting. Our meeting has an ID, a title, a description, a complex type of person for an organizer and a list of person for attendees. 
As you can see, we're using the JavaX Persistence API with our at entity annotation that decorates the class, our at ID and generated value that lets uh, H2 know that we're going to have a auto incremented ID. And then you can see the mappings that we have for the complex types below. We're also using Lombok here for at data, um, at all args constructor, at no args constructor, and at builder. So the at data is going to generate all of our getters, setters, hash codes, equals, to string, everything that you need without any boilerplate code. Um, our args and no args constructors give us constructors. And then the at builder, of course, uh, builds a builder um, pattern for us to be able to fluidly create these objects. Our second domain object that we have is person. So here a person has an ID, a first name, a last name, an email address, an office phone number, and a mobile phone number. Uh, we have all the same annotations from the previous uh, domain object. So that covers our domain objects. Let's go ahead and review the repositories we've set up for our domain objects. So we have a meeting repository. We've annotated that with that repository. It extends a CRUD repository from Spring JPA, um, and we pass in a meeting in an ID type of long. Similarly, for the person domain object, we've created a person repository that follows the exact same pattern. All right, we'll go ahead and dive into our GraphQLS screen schema. Um, as this is a, a schema first build, we've gone ahead and defined a type of person with a, an ID, named ID, a first name of type string that's required, that's what the exclamation point means, a last name, an email address, both required, uh, a phone number and a, a mobile phone number, not required. Our meeting type, we again have an ID, a title that's required, a description that's not required, although all good meetings should have one, um, an organizer which is required, and attendees which are not required, although it may be a lonely meeting if you're the only one there. We also define a query that will pull back meetings by ID and return back a singular meeting, um, that will pull back uh, a list of all meetings, a person by ID, and a list of all people. All right, before we jump into our resolvers, let's take one more second on our schema. So you can see on line 14 and 15, we've defined a complex type of a person. So not only are we going to need to cover our uh, query resolver, we're also going to need to cover a meeting resolver to tell GraphQL how to resolve type person with inside of meeting. So let's go ahead and talk about our root query resolver first. So we've implemented a class query that implements a GraphQL query resolver. We've auto wired in our meeting repository and our meeting repository. And you can see on line 24, we've got our first uh, method defined here to pull back a meeting by ID. We uh, search for our meeting by ID. If it's present, we return it. If it's not, we throw an exception with a useful error message. On line 31, uh, you can see that we have defined uh, the method to pull back all meetings, which will return back a list of meetings. Again, we just query all of our meetings from our meeting repository and return back a, a list of meetings. On line 35, we're querying a person by ID, um, just like we queried a meeting by ID earlier on line 24. Um, all of the same code there, so I'll skip going over that. And on line 42, similarly, we, we pull back all people and we return back a list of people. So that covers our resolvers. All right, let's go ahead and open up our main GraphQL meeting application class. Um, this is an auto-generated class given to us by start.spring.io, which is fantastic. Thank you, Spring. Um, and you can see here that we have a Spring Boot application. We've enabled JPA repositories and enabled transaction management. We auto wire in our person repository and our meeting repository again. And we have our typical public static void main um, method to kick off our GraphQL Spring Boot application. There is one additional uh, point that we, we've added here, and that is a filter. So let's go ahead and review that. On line 36, we have a filter that we've added. 
Um, and it is an open entity manager and viewer filter. So let's go ahead and pop open the documentation for this and, and try to make this a little bit more legible. So this, uh, this filter uh, uh, is a servlet filter that binds to a JPA entity manager um, to the thread for the entire processing of the request. It's intended for an open entity manager and view pattern, i.e. to allow lazy loading in web view despite the original transaction already being closed. So, so this is really key because where GraphQL allows you to pull back pieces and parts of a specific um, uh, you know, query set that you've defined, um, you, know, you can pull back, let's say, all the root level portions of a meeting, but maybe you don't care who organized the meeting or you don't care who is attending. You know, so you don't actually have to go and re resolve those types. So um, this is going to allow, if you do want to resolve those types, those are going to generate subsequent queries um, that you need to have happen with inside of a single transaction. So this will keep that open. All right, let's go ahead and dive into creating our seed data. So on line 41, uh, we've gone ahead and used that builder pattern that we talked about for a person and generated uh, myself, so Steve Catra. Um, you can always reach out to me at uh, steve.catra at gmail.com. Um, of course, I haven't given you real phone numbers here, so we're adding a mobile phone number, an office phone number, and we're building that object. Similarly, we're building John Smith, a fictitious person. So now that we have two people, we have enough to uh, populate a minimum subset of seed data. So we've created a list of attendees. In this case, John's going to attend my meeting and we've created a one-on-one. -on -one. So um, in, in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting object, we've built a title of one-on-one -on -one with John, uh, the descriptions to discuss goals and accomplishments, uh, I'm going to be the meeting organizer and John will be in my list of attendees. So we'll go ahead and build that and persist it and that's going to give us enough to actually test out this GraphQL API. All right, now that we've covered our domain objects, our JPA repository, how to generate a schema, resolvers, our servlet filter, and we populated some C data, what do you say we actually set up GraphIQL and really use this endpoint that we've set up? So let's go to our application YAML file. Here you can see on line one, we've defined GraphQL, line two, a servlet. Then we kind of going down the line, just have a mapping for forward slash GraphQL. That's gonna make our endpoint available. You can customize where your endpoint is available should you choose to. Um, we've decided to enable that endpoint. We're going to have uh, exception handlers enabled, which you know, those GraphQL exceptions that we were firing off earlier in the video, this will actually allow those messages to show through. Um, for a context setting, we're going to instrument per, uh, per query and we're going to turn off uh, tracing. You can turn it on if you need more verbose output later, but this is just how to set up the overall GraphQL servlet. And now how to set up the Graph IQL servlet, you'll see it's very similar to the GraphQL one. You do Graph IQL on line nine. On line 10, you set up the mapping. Um, on line 11 and 12, you set up the endpoint for subscription and GraphQL. We're, we're not covering subscriptions here, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek. Always wanted to try to offer a little bit more. Um, and we're going to enable this and give a page title of Graph IQL. Now I've already fired up the server and I've shown you how to do that on previous lessons. So go ahead and fire that up. And now that we're at localhost 8080 slash GraphQL or Graph IQL, we will uh, go ahead and start exploring Graph IQL. So let's take a look at our docs. Um, with inside of our docs in the upper right hand corner, um, we'll see that it's got a root type of query with our root level queries that we've defined so far. Not a lot of description to tell you what they are. Uh, that's kind of problematic because I really don't know why would I want to pull back a meeting by ID or what is a person or why am I pulling back people? And specifically when you when you search into a meeting, you can see all of the primitives and complex types that are there and you're able to explore them, but you have no idea why you'd want to do so. 
but that that's okay. Let's go ahead and write our first query and, and we'll see how this is all gonna work and um, we will improve that documentation later. So we're gonna pull back all people first and we're gonna pull back an ID for them, a first name, their last name, uh, email address, office phone, mobile. So pretty much the entire object. We'll go ahead and run that. We can see that we've got Steve and John coming back just like we decided. And we've determined at this point, you know what? We really don't care what their fictitious phone numbers are. So we'll drop those and we'll pull this back. Um, and, and at this point, you can see that there's a lot of peri or value with GraphQL because you can change that query selection quite easily. You can also do some advanced things like maybe on the client UI, you really don't want to know first name. Maybe you, you're opinionated and you want to call it first. And maybe you want to call your last name last. And maybe email address is a bit too verbose for you and you prefer email. And in that case, that's perfectly fine. So you just alias those and now you can change how those fields come back for you. So you can really, you know, query the way you want to with GraphQL, which is fantastic. It gives a lot of power uh, to both the publisher of the API and the consumer. All right, so let's go ahead and pull back all meetings. All right, so with our meetings, we're gonna pull back our ID, a title, a description. I wanna know who the organizer is, who's the guy taking up my time. Uh, let's figure out their first name and their last name. All right, and I, I'm interested who's who's coming to this meeting and can we know their first name and their last name? All right, so now let's fire off that query. So as we can see, we've only got one meeting on the books right now. It's a one-on-one -on -one with John to discuss goals and accomplishments. Steve's the organizer, John is the attendee. All right, so we can explore this, this, uh, this GraphQL schema quite easily with uh, GraphIQL. It gives us a lot of power. You know, but let's go ahead and add, you know, one more uh, nicety um, in place, which is documentation, right? We've all been there. We've dealt with APIs that lack documentation. It's just no fun. So let's go back over. We'll stop our server. Um, we are going to pull open our schema and we're going to do a few updates here. So um, as you can see, this is the schema that we reviewed earlier in the video. We're just going to replace it with a schema that now has this hashtag and then a description above each um, type and each field that's going to give you a little bit of descriptive text around what those fields are. So now let's go ahead and start our server back up. We'll head back over to um, Graph IQL to see how that's kind of changed the tone of, of our, our endpoint. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a refresh. So now when we come in, we see that we still have root type of query. Oh, and this is a meeting API. And, and this is gonna help me fetch meetings by ID or fetch all meetings or fetch a person by ID or fetch all people. So that's great. So I, I, you know, I wanna pull up a meeting by ID. So what is a meeting? You know, a meeting is when two or more people come together to discuss one or more topics. Sounds pretty, pretty typical. And you can see here, we've got some documentation on each specific field that way someone has some idea of what they're going to be pulling back when they pull it back so this is a great way to document your schema in place and, and make your api a little bit more user friendly all right so again if you've liked this session i invite you to subscribe or like um, drop some comments below and, and let me know you know what type of graphql uh, schema do you want to create? What what are you excited to expose through a GraphQL endpoint? And what questions do you have for me that I could take care of in upcoming videos?